If you've ever traveled out of the country, you might recognize this little guy. This is Beasley. He's a two-year-old beagle. He's been trained to find fruits, plants, meats, and seeds in the luggage of passengers coming into the country. As members of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection's Beagle Brigade, Beasley and his compatriots patrol airports across the country, including here, Baltimore Washington International. When he smells something that he's been trained to find, such as apples or sausage or pork, whatever, he will sit beside the bag yeah. and let me know that I need to open it or examine it a little further. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Any agricultural items for you today? Fruits or vegetables from Mexico? Any plants, meats, seeds? There are many agricultural products originating in foreign countries that travelers aren't allowed to bring into the U.S. The reason? Along with screening for drugs and weapons, protecting America's farms from contamination by foreign disease and pests is actually a big part of the mission of U.S. Customs and Border Protection, an agency that falls under the jurisdiction of the Department of Homeland Security. One little tiny pest, whether it's a fruit fly, can cause absolutely millions of dollars of damage. And so it is our charge to make sure that any invasive pest that's not prevalent in the United States, meaning it's not already growing here or not already living here, stays out of the country. One example is the emerald ash borer, a beetle native to Asia that officials think first came to the U.S. in woodpacking materials. It's estimated to have caused hundreds of millions of dollars in damage to ash trees in the Baltimore area alone. Here at the airport, defending against potential agricultural threats means sanitizing shoes that may have logged some miles on a foreign farm and giving some bags a more thorough inspection. It may not seem like a big deal to bring back, say, a little ham from a trip to Italy, but it could cause big problems for U.S. pork producers. Pork is not allowed in because there are viral diseases that can remain in the pork for months and in frozen foods up to years. So you're all set. Just make sure in the future that you declare all food items. And fruit? It could be host to microscopic bugs that American orchards have never seen. We get little red eggs inside, bugs. For the most part, the confiscated food products are sealed up and incinerated, but certain items, ones that are thought to pose a risk, go back to the lab for a closer inspection. They look almost kind of like citrus leaves. We will look under the microscope and we will isolate any diseases or pests and we send them to, we package them up and send them to our identifier. If they find something, the United States Department of Agriculture takes it from there. And the findings are recorded so other inspectors know what to look for. But of course, officers have to be prepared for it all, the likely and the not so likely. They usually have a different kind of response. It's not the, the quick sit, it's, it's more of a, something's interesting in here. And that's when you start asking some questions and you find, you know, that's when you find the monkeys that people have cooked and then put on a steak or or iguana meat, or, you know, some of the weird stuff that we find. Monkey meat may be prohibited, but there are some agricultural items that are allowed. It's actually best not to bring anything in, but if you're going to bring in it, do your homework ahead of time, learn what you can bring in, and then declare it so you don't get penalized. Of course, potential threats don't only arrive by air, they also come by sea. At the port of Baltimore, the first line of defense, after a quick look at the exterior of incoming cargo, is what's called a tailgate check. So this is coffee from Colombia, and generally what we want to do is just do a basic quick inspection of the bags, make sure there's nothing hitchhiking on the bags. One hitchhiker in particular. Capra beetle, which is the most invasive, destructive pest in the world, shows up pretty, pretty cleanly. When you see an infestation, you'll see cast skins, you'll see dead bodies, you'll see all kinds of you know, anomalies that you would normally see on a clean commodity. Even when there's nothing visible, specialists still take samples to make sure there's no weeds, seeds, or pests inside the bags themselves. And we'll generally try to sample at least two or three bags We'll do a quick sieve of the coffee beans. So 
So far, it looks like all coffee beans, which is good. If all of this seems like a search for a beetle in a haystack, keep in mind missing something minuscule could have massive consequences. If we were to get something like capra beetle established, that would not only destroy our, our ability for food storage here in the United States, but it also would greatly affect our ability to export. It would put a lot of restrictions on our ability to export grains and wheat and corn and things like that. Agriculture specialists check shipments of things like steel coils, too. Not because of the product, but because of the packaging material, wood. So far, I haven't seen any visible holes, anything to indicate that there's any wood borer activity in this wood right now. It would be nearly impossible to physically check all of the incoming cargo at the Port of Baltimore. We'll come in, we'll take a look at the surface of the corn again. We're looking for obvious signs of pests. So inspectors target certain shipments, like this organic corn from Argentina, based on what's on board and where it's coming from. High-risk shipments might find their way here, the centralized examination station, for a more thorough inspection. This looks pretty clean overall. Nothing jumping out at us, so probably good to go here. These chickpeas are clean, but every day, inspectors find something that, unchecked, could threaten our food supply. Here is organic brown rice. And most of us will be blissfully unaware of the risk that was averted, which, as it turns out, is a good thing. If we're not doing our job, this is different than you paying $3 for a loaf of bread versus maybe six or seven, because as soon as a pest gets established in our system, and now farmers have to spend additional money to try to eradicate that pest or control that pest or whatever the case may be. All of a sudden now there's something in the supply chain that's affecting that cost. We're gonna pay a lot more for those basic necessities.